Do you want to know the six most common regrets my coaching students have shared with me about their English learning journeys? These regrets destroyed their confidence, wreaked havoc on their careers, and kept them from reaching their potential with speaking English. It's true. Regret number one. Just yesterday, I met with a brand new client and he told me he's working with two English tutors as we speak, doing weekly sessions, but he told me that they don't really know anything about pronunciation and they said they really can't help him in that area. They've veered him back to his other English issues, which were grammar and vocabulary, their most comfortable comfort zone. But it wasn't what he actually needed his main help with. The regret is focusing only on grammar and vocabulary and neglecting pronunciation. Many English tutors primarily focus on teaching grammar rules and expanding vocabulary, as these are definitely fundamental aspects of language, no question about it. But pronunciation can sometimes be seen as a secondary goal or secondary important component. Many English teachers unfortunately have no specialized training in pronunciation instruction. They might feel less confident in their ability to teach pronunciation effectively. So as a result, they kind of avoid focusing on it extensively. Assessing pronunciation accurately requires specific training and specific tools. English tutors, even extremely seasoned instructors, often find it really challenging to provide meaningful feedback on pronunciation just simply because they don't have that necessary expertise or even the resources to do so. Pronunciation instruction is often perceived as far more challenging than teaching grammar and vocabulary, especially for tutors who aren't as confident in their own pronunciation or their lack of expertise in that area. But of course, speech and the pronunciation of a language, it's an essential part of learning a language. So focusing on only one area of speech and language and neglecting another essential area is not a good idea. <laughs> Regret number two. I remember a client I worked with who took the route of immersing himself in American English media to improve his English speaking skills. He spent years on trying to improve his pronunciation by imitating actors and in his favorite movies, repeating speakers on videos, singing along to his favorite American singers, and all with the goal to be more clear and confident when he spoke English. So after years of doing this, what was his result? Well, he told me that there really was no change in his speech and he felt like he improved his vocabulary and his grammar has changed and he learned lots of new phrases to use, but his pronunciation challenges still existed. He told me he hugely regretted wasting all those years. The regret is believing that English pronunciation will improve by sheer osmosis. Listening and repeating to movies and videos or the radio speakers or other native English speakers. Now, listening and repeating native English speakers is definitely helpful for improving pronunciation and accent when you know what you're analyzing but it's not really sufficient on its own for many, many reasons. If you're not aware of your own pronunciation problems and the difficulties that you have, and you don't know which parts of your speech to focus on, you may not notice the differences between your own pronunciation and that of a native speaker of your goal language, whatever that might be. And without targeted feedback on your pronunciation errors or differences, learners essentially just repeat the same mistakes without really realizing it. And your friends and colleagues are unlikely to help, unfortunately. A native speaker, especially English speakers, are very unlikely to correct subtle pronunciation differences or provide feedback just simply for cultural reasons and, you know, the... the worry to offend someone. Even if you had a close friend or a family member who, who might explain some things that maybe you're saying differently, they have no way of really providing a detailed explanation or any guidance on how to improve it because they don't know either. Improving your pronunciation requires more than passive listening and repetition, unfortunately. 
The secret is that learners need to actively engage in the exercises and drills that focus on very specific problems. So it could be specific sounds that you struggle with, specific intonation patterns, and mouth movements to develop pronunciation changes. And if you're still with me, another regret is forgetting to click that little like button and subscribing to this channel because I mean, how else are you going to get incredible insights and practice videos to achieve your English pronunciation goals? You know what I mean. But regret number three is when you rely on your English teacher to point out pronunciation. Going along the lines of regret number one, the next regret is assuming your English teacher would have told you if you had pronunciation problems. Most of the clients I work with realize that their pronunciation is the biggest challenge for them in English. It's obvious to them that their instructors just made very few or no corrections to their pronunciation. The regret is relying on others to point out if you have issues with English pronunciation or not. There are so many reasons why your English teacher is hesitant to mention your pronunciation. It may be that they didn't notice it because they're really used to that pronunciation. Or possibly your instructor had a non-native English accent themselves. If they felt unsure of what to listen for and didn't really know how to fix the issue if they did hear it, they might just not mention it. It's important to be proactive, to be upfront with your English instructor and talk about your goals, your speaking goals, and find out if your tutor or instructor has the knowledge of the speech mechanism and the resources to adequately assess and provide the tools that you might need to correct that area of speech. Relying on your teacher may seem like a great idea, but it has been one of the top regrets of my students since they feel like they could have dealt with their issues when they were learning English and not four, 10, 15 years later. Regret number four, I was talking to a recent coaching client and she explained that it wasn't until she changed positions in her career that she realized that she'd been neglecting her pronunciation and she never noticed it before. She previously worked on a team comprised of non-native English speakers. In fact, she was so proud that her pronunciation was at such a high level as compared to her colleagues. So when she got a promotion and moved teams, it became immediately clear to her that she had not been speaking with native English speakers and all of a sudden she struggled to be understood. And then she noticed other people struggling to understand her and catch her meeting and give her that little scrunched up face. So her regret when talking to me was that speaking with a very small group of people and getting very comfortable with a small group of people, not actually expanding her abilities and trying to see how she was with others. My client told me that she wished she had taken the time to expand her social group to continue to grow her skills, she wasn't even aware of how much she struggled to be understood. She was actually shocked because she thought she was at a very high level. And when reality hit, she knew she needed to focus on her pronunciation specifically in English. Regret number five. One very common thread amongst my students is that their lack of confidence affects their willingness to continue to work on their English speaking skills. After experiencing really, really uncomfortable and very embarrassing communication breakdowns, that's when their confidence plummets. So the result of that is that they just don't want to put themselves out there anymore. When work meetings come up, they avoid talking to new people um, and making new friends and just out of fear of saying something wrong, they're limiting their opportunities to speak. The regret is letting your lack of confidence affect your learning. So this affects my students' quality of life in such a big way. The mistakes that they made made them feel self-conscious or embarrassed about their pronunciation. And with many students, it resulted in avoiding speaking English altogether. And then for some students, it resulted in not putting themselves out there, limiting their speaking, all in the hopes to not feel that embarrassment anymore. Regret number six, have you ever wondered why someone who was born in another country can speak English as their second language with nearly no noticeable accent and another person 
speaks with a very strong accent. Now, generally, people who acquire a new language, second, third, fourth, at a younger age and are surrounded by the pronunciation of that second language at a young age, they tend to develop that native-like accent much more easily because younger learners' brains are they're much more adaptable to acquiring new skills. Many people believe that since they learned a second language at a later age, it just simply will be impossible to change their accent. But this is not the case. Although it is more difficult as an adult than it would be when you were a child, it requires something a little different. It requires explicit learning to practice. So what's the regret? Waiting too long to focus on pronunciation. Waiting too long to get help. It's thinking that time will fix the issue. Pronunciation difficulties that go uncorrected can become even more ingrained. They become habits that are just far more difficult to break later on. The longer you wait to learn the sounds of English that do not exist in your first language, the more difficult it is to change those movements of the mouth and create new sounds and new habits. So as the saying goes, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time, right now. Of course, the same is true with any goal, just like improving pronunciation. Clear pronunciation opens up opportunities for English learners, including better jobs, closer social interactions, improved academic performance. Pronunciation has a very big impact and waiting and hoping that time will help just won't give you the results that you're likely looking for. So let me help you avoid these mistakes and give you a few secrets of what to do instead. Avoiding regrets, secret number one. I meet new ESL professionals every week who tell me that they know they want and need to improve their clarity and their confidence when speaking English, but they don't know where to start. Literally the moment their issues are pointed out and a plan's laid out for them, it becomes crystal clear what to do. First, you need to find out what your issues are, then focus with high laser-like intensity on those issues without getting distracted. Get a speech assessment from a professional who understands articulation and pronunciation specifically and who has expert insights on accents. You can access a speech assessment on my website, or you could even do a free self-assessment. You can self-analyze the sounds and issues that you get most caught on. Focus on those first. Master those issues before moving on to other things. And yes, this may mean working on, I don't know, the L sound for a month or more, but that's how to do it. You can find a self-assessment tool on my website, and the link is down below. Avoiding regrets. Secret number two, work in steps. Don't expect yourself to just get it, merely by osmosis. Learning by listening is great, but to get a real skill, you have to do it and you have to use it in a way that doesn't overwhelm you so that you don't give up. This means working step by step to get to conversation. If you're looking for a way to do this yourself, my English Pronunciation Masterclass course would be an example of just that. You can find it on my website or you can look through my YouTube playlist and there you can get a free idea of what working through steps might actually look like for specific sounds and for specific pronunciation issues. The point here is do not get overwhelmed focusing on everything and getting nothing accomplished. Have a plan and work the steps. Secret number three, increasing your awareness. Instead of blindly listening for years, hoping for change, learn how to analyze the speech you hear around you every day so you actually make improvements. If you know what to listen for, you hear speech in an entirely different way. You'll hear words in English that are spoken in ways that are nothing like they're spelled. And the music of English will make so much more sense when you understand the rules of intonation and stress. Once you do that, you can learn how to analyze your own speech, making lasting improvements. When you know what to focus on, improving your pronunciation becomes infinitely easier. If you want to start to improve your awareness, then check out this video on intonation. It's a great place to start. And if you want to understand the pronunciation secrets of the American English accent, then watch this video. You do not want to speak English without this skill. See you there.